I'm Presley Mayer. I'm Brooklyn Frankenstein. And we have Zap That Zip. Our question was, which face wash works better? We believed that all the products would work well, just some of them would work better than others. We had all of these face washes. We had two expensive and two drugstore items. Our two expensive were the Ordinary and Panoxyl, and our two drugstore were the Clearport and CeraVe. Here are our materials. We um, boiled water to make everything was sterile, put everything in a hot candle, you know, to make sure it's all safe. Um, for our bacteria, we used E. coli culture, and we put it on an agar plate, let it grow, incubated it for 48 hours, you know, so the bacteria can grow, and then we put on our acne medications to see which ones work best. Now here in our picture below, you can see which ones have circles around it, meaning um, the bacteria grew around the medication, uh, implying that the medication did work. So after all of our data, you can tell that um, the ordinary did work the best. It does have a slight red color to it, but that is because of what the liquid is made out of. Um, CeraVe works second best, and that's just a general cleanser that everyone can use on their skin, you know, whether it's dry or oily. Um, and Panoxyl and Clearpore were the worst. They didn't really do much. Um, they really just helped the bacteria on what the surface was, but as the Ordinary and CeraVe, they did help to prevent the bacteria and work around it, not just on what the medication was applied to. Um, so our different medications do have different purposes. Like Panoxo has 10% uh, benzoyl peroxide, which is known to dry out your skin. So that is made for a more oily skin. Whereas CeraVe is just, you know, your regular foaming facial cleanser, which can be used for different types of skin. Um, clear pour is a daily cleanser or a mask, depending on what your skin feels like that day. You know, if you're wearing makeup, you might want to use a deep cleansing mask to really get your pores cleaned out. Or if you're just, you know, every day today, you can just use it as a daily cleanser. And then the Ordinary is more of just a, you know, you use it once a week to really clean off your face and get it exfoliated and however you want to feel. But in conclusion, the Ordinary did work the best. Hello, my name is Michael Nielsen. And I'm Harley Nielsen, and our project was, will polymers allow for plant growth after soil pollution? Our hypothesis was to test how motor fluid contaminated soil would allow for sustained growth of corn and if polymers would ease this corn and its growth. So basically what we did is we took five gallon buckets and we used cardboard to divide them into thirds and then we filled them with soil. And then we grew corn seedlings and uh, replanted them into these tri-divided um, pots or five-gallon buckets. And then we let them grow for three weeks and then we did experiments on two of the pots. And then at six weeks we did two more and then at 12 weeks we did two more and then we had control growing to the side. Uh, we had three corn in each pot or bucket and then we tested the reason why there's two at each week is because we tested both hydraulic oil and antifreeze. So once so when it was at three well I'll put it at three weeks. Once it was at three weeks we then that during midday we took five hundred milliliters of both the hydraulic and antifreeze and we put the hydraulic oil in the one and we put the antifreeze into the other. We waited 15 minutes and then we used a water absorbing and an oil absorbing polymer. The water absorbing polymer was a potassium poly polymer, so potassium sorbate, and that's what we used for water absorbing and then our oil absorbing we used floor dry. Both of these were hopefully found on a lot of farms, especially if they took part in gardening or the such. Our conclusions were simple. It shows that antifreeze in the soil would allow, not most likely allow for no plant growth and the plant would shut down and die. A hydraulic oil spill 
has a possible solution to continue the growth. It is unknown whether there is any toxin in the matured corn that could grow at this point, but if the only wish is to continue production, there is a solution. The solution is using the water absorbing polymer in the hydraulic oil affected plant. Thank you. Hello, my name is Morgan Bottom. Sienna Stoner, freshman. Um, our project was, does mouthwash work? And then our hypothesis was that Listerine would work the best because of the research we did. Yep. And what we did for our project was we wanted to test to see if mouthwash really worked because most people use it after brushing their teeth to freshen their breath and get rid of the bacteria that your toothbrush in it. And so we wanted to take things a step further and see which one worked the best. So we used three different mouthwashes, which was Listerine, Crest, and an off-brand, which was like Rexall something. And we had three volunteers, and before school we would swab their mouth, and then we had them rinse mouthwash in the mouth for 30 seconds. And we then had them spread it out and we swab their mouth again, put it on another petri dish, and then after school we swab their mouth again to see the after effects of it. And yep, um, off brand worked the best. And then Listerine was second and Crest was the worst. It got progressively worse. So our conclusion is that you should use off brand because it works the best, it's the cheapest and it's the best. So thank you for watching. See you later. Deuces. I'm Preston Weff. And I am Tristan Noel. And today we are presenting our science fair project and it's about how do different liquids affect plant growth. So our hypothesis, hypothesis was that the water plant was going, to do, was going to grow the most and the lemon juice plant might have a chance of growing but um, we thought that the Mountain Dew and the Monster Energy would not grow because they had too much sugar in it. And giving plants sugar would just make it, make them not grow their own so they will die. And the cold coffee we figured would not grow because it was too cold for the seed. The materials were water, Mountain Dew, lemon juice, Monster Energy, and coffee. We had marigold seed for the plant, and we had pots, dirt, and a measuring cup. Our methods, um, what we were going to do, we had five marigold seeds. We were going to put them in pots, and we are going to hydrate each seed with, di with different liquids. We did like one and a half cups, and um, after every few days, we would check and take pictures. And when we were done doing that, um, we would come together and show each other the results. With the results, the Monster Energy plant did, showed no progress and did not have any mold. The Mountain Dew plant did not grow at all and showed little to no progress after 20 days. The lemon juice plant, like the coffee plant, grew mold but the plant did not grow either. The water plant grew very well and after the 20 days, about, which is about three weeks, it was green and healthy. The coffee plant did not grow and after five days it grew a lot of mold so we had to throw it away. In conclusion, different liquids can affect plant growth for the worse and cause the plants not to grow. We figured out that water is the best liquid to use on plants because the water plant is the only plant that grew. And it was used naturally to transfer nutrients to plants in the wild. The four other liquids Monster Energy, Coffee, Lemon Juice, and Mountain Dew failed to make the plants grow and should never be used on plants. Um, that is all. We have, of course, we have our pictures here. Uh, that's the Lemon Juice. That's the Monster Energy. Here's the Lemon, or the Mountain Dew and some water. There's the coffee plant and these are the two uh, pictures of the water plant when it grew. So, thanks for watching. See you later.